How do you head these days with the head shops, alco pops, internet, place your bet, have sex with a girl you've never met, bet on soccer, go to copper, shots of vodka, Jager bombers, caffeine, salpadine, benzodiazepines, overprescribed antidepressants, marketing to adolescents, billboards, legal highs, drinks industries advertised, and properly, probably, it's part of our identity. Arthur Guinness, big business, the bloody 12 pubs of Christmas, marketing, staggering, come home for the gathering, buy it, eat it, fuck it, love it, clink it, think it. It, pop it, sink it, and most of all in Ireland, drink it, and everything will be grand. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now under the influence. Thank you. My mother used to joke, you don't have to be Irish to be an alcoholic, but it helps. We hear a lot about Irish drinking habits nowadays, and they're never too positive. So, in this series, we hope to take a look at what's driving that negative relationship with alcohol. From the weather to addiction, we try to find out, why do Irish people drink so much? The tough thing about talking about Irish drinking is, in Ireland, you're not just tackling behavior, you're tackling identity. And when you're challenging people's identity, that is not an easy thing to talk about. Are you guys busy? No! <laughs> you busy? Are you, are you busy? No. Are you busy? Um, yeah. If, if you were thinking about like what Irish identity is or what the cliches around Irish identity is, what would be the first things that come to your mind? Guinness of potatoes. How, how would you describe Ireland's relationship with alcohol? Very good. Very good. <laughs> Love hate relationship with potatoes. That's very, it's very, very bad. <laughs> right. Everything in the Irish culture has got to do with the pub, everything. Absolutely everything. Everyone's brought up in the pub, everyone's there's pubs everywhere. Drinking Irish girls get it perfectly. That's what we are. That's what I even know as far as drinking as well, isn't it? When you think about it, alcohol is connected to every major occasion in Irish life. When the baby is born, we wet the baby's head. When the baby is christened and actually getting their head wet, we knock back a few in celebration. Then when the child gets communion, confirmed, as they're running around the pub with a bag full of envelopes, happy as a Fianna Fáil counselor in the 1990s, <laughs> we have a few drinks on their behalf. Then, when that child gets old enough, they wet their junior cert results, their leaving cert results, their 18th birthday, their 21st birthday. We passed it on. It's the family relay race of Irish drinking. Then we have St. Patrick's Day, the Irish wedding, the Christmas party, Good Friday, because you're not meant to. <laughs> Christmas Day. Stevens Day, which of course we always mispronounce Stevens' Day, which I'm pretty sure is because we got so used to hearing it slurred. <laughs> A lot of Irish people will spend a good bit of their life with a hangover, saying things like, I'm sick as a pig, never again, or my favorite, I am dying this morning. <laughs> and then, one day, we will actually die. Not because we drink too much, but just because that's what humans do. But don't despair, because as you lay dying, everyone will be on the way to saying the same about themselves, because there's never a better reason to drink than an Irish funeral. Should we started by wetting the baby's head, why would we not drown our sorrows? <laughs> I'm here probably because of drink. You have to look at that as well. My parents probably hooked up because of drink, and so did 90% of everyone's family. You know, the parents hooked up because of drink. So in, whether it be in my parents' generation, in a hall somewhere, or whether it's in a nightclub, now it is, you know? How many people are the product of cafes in this country, would you say? I'd say a minuscule percentage of people are, were, were kind of, you know, the whole idea, the germ of them started over a latte. Drink begets riding begets children. I'm, I was born on December 23rd. If you take more or less nine months away, it's March 17th. <laughs> St. Patrick's child. <laughs> well, if you look at the amount of things you do as a human in Ireland, if you say, like, how many things you've done, a lot of them would be while you were drunk. Do you know what I mean? Weddings, funerals, christenings, anything really that there's any form of celebration that there was going to be good times, drink will be involved in it, like, do you know what I mean? So the only time you're not really drinking is probably when you're in work. I guess there's some people in the room thinking, why the fuck is this guy talking to us about drink, you know? Now, here's the thing. I was, no, here's the thing. 
I am an alcoholic. And I know what Irish people think when they hear me saying that. They think, oh, Des Bishop thinks he's an alcoholic. <laughs> Typical yank. I'd say he got sick once and thought, oh my God. Oh my God, I lost control. I'm an alcoholic. I need to do something about my drinking. The main reason why I gave up booze is because, like, it was just causing me problems, you know? Like, when I started, I couldn't stop. And in my not stopping, a lot of bad stuff happened. I'm not trying to tell the story of a guy that was an alcoholic and stopped and now wants to tell everybody that they need to stop too. But what I do want to say is that this is the story of somebody who figured out he had a problem and when he stopped, his life was a lot better. When you ask a lot of people, why do Irish people drink? They say the crack, you know, like the crack is part of Irish culture. And I like the crack myself, but if I was to say what's motivating me with this series, I want to see, you know, what's underneath the crack. I kind of want to open the crack up and take a look down into the crevasse that is left and, and see what's really bubbling underneath, you know? Because if you ask somebody why they drink and they say, we're Irish, that's why we drink, I want to see how being Irish became being drunk. In order for the world to boil down a small country, it needs some very simple symbols. For Ireland, it's drink, leprechauns, rain, and the Clancy Brothers' woolly jumpers. You know, we've boiled ourselves down to very simple ideograms, and for Ireland, one of those ideograms is a tilted point and a happy head. It's disassociation with booze in Ireland. You know, you have to say in the overall, it's been a hugely negative thing. You know, it projects this image of the jolly, happy, clappy paddies you know, having a few jars and laughing and coming out of themselves, you know, being funny, talking. That's great. That's uh, 8 o'clock at night stuff. You know, everybody's at that stage at 8 o'clock at night, they're after a few jars. What they leave out is the rest of the night. I think people enjoy being fun Bobby. People enjoy Ireland being seen as that. And there's a huge affection towards Ireland abroad. You know, I don't think Irish people are very willing to let that go. Not only is it part of our own identity, it's part of our brand. So we love saying the Irish love to drink, but then when other people call us the drunken paddy, we get offended, which is right to be offended because it's racist. However, if we hate this stereotype, if we hate being called the drunken Irish, how come every time an international leader comes to this country, we can't feckin' wait to get the pint of Guinness into their hand? <laughs> Gorbachev, Ronald Reagan, Bill Clinton, Prince Philip, Jesus Christ. It was like the country was on edge waiting for him to take a sip. It's like, <laughs> will he or won't he? You know? It's a really awkward moment with the Queen looking at him going, don't you fucking dare drink that. <laughs> These are savage people. You don't want to drink that. <laughs> and of course, the kind of most famous, most recent one, Barack Obama. Oh, Jesus. Wasn't Barack so Irish that day? his 14th cousin down in Offaly. We couldn't wait. It was like, hey, black fella, get the black stuff into you. Good man, come on. Here's the thing. My brother's married to a Colombian, right? Maritza Garcia. It's my brother's wife's name. Now she's Maritza Bishop. Doesn't flow. People think about Colombia, they think about cocaine. And Colombians are bored with that stereotype. Just like Irish people are bored with the fact they go abroad. It's like, oh, you're from Ireland. It's very boring. So do you think when Barack Obama goes to Colombia? <laughs> Mr. Obama, welcome to Colombia. But first, before you do anything, Please. Please. It's become this sort of, you know, thing you can blame. Oh, yeah, of course I'm drunk. I'm Irish. Yeah, we're, we're good at guilt, you know, and we're good at, we're good at excuses. And, and having that, ah, sure, everyone does it, it's fine, sort of helps us as people to get over the fact that we were really guilty about everything, maybe. You know, if you live in a repressive society and you're, you're told you can't do this and you don't do that and you don't do that, uh, you want to get out of that. You want to get out of your head. You know, you want to take a vacation from your Irishness. 
I actually quite like drinking. You know, I like when people have a drink, have a few drinks. I like hanging out with my friends when they're drinking. But obviously, when they get drunk, the fun kind of stops, you know. And if you have a society where blacking out becomes a normal thing, you are going to end up with the phenomenon I like to call Stumbleville. And that is the hijacking of all our towns on a Friday or Saturday night. Mullingar, Tullamore, Galway, Dublin, Cork, they cease to be the town name and they all become one town, Stumbleville. A town I can't stand because I am a non-drinking driver. And if you have ever driven through Stumbleville, you will know it's like a feckin' video game. <laughs> Except you don't get points for avoiding other human beings. It's very fucking challenging because it seems that they want you to hit them. They do that kind of like, ah! Stumbleville is very recognisable to me, particularly as a comedian, because you tend to do a lot of driving at night, coming back from gigs. And uh, I often have this Travis Bickle moment if ever I'm driving through Dublin. There's this monologue going along in your head going, someday a great rain's going to come, because it is this kind of zombie feeling as people are just walking across. And they're having the best crack all together with jaywalking. They love it. <laughs> <laughs> but they have no concept of actual, you know, collisions. Stumbleville's residents have shoes but don't want to wear the shoes and also if you see water you must get into the water that's two of the rules of Stumbleville look at this this is a if this is not a modern Irish traffic jam this is a drunken jam <laughs> this is like this is literally just drunk people on the street like it's a takeover it's an occupation you know congratulations you win I gotta be honest, man. I drive down here sometimes, three o'clock at night after I come back from a gig somewhere down the country. It's kind of like an AA meeting. <laughs> Just reminds me of why I never want to fucking drink again. I mean, look at this, like. We need to not delude ourselves and think that this is a new problem. It just has taken a new form. <laughs> Isn't it great? You know, at least there is one place where you can be drunk, be a complete idiot, and people don't judge you, I suppose, and they just let you off. And, you know, because if you were acting like this in somewhere like Nairobi, they'd arrest you, or yeah. they'd put you in, in a mental asylum. I see it. It's like Lord of the Rings after 12 o'clock. People are just crawling up out of the ground and all. It's bananas. If you're not able to go to the toilet, you, there's something wrong, like, you know what I mean? If you can't go, I need to go to a bathroom, but if you're going to the toilet, up against a shop window, I think someone needs to sit down and have a chat with someone, like, you know? If the only way you can have a good time is being drunk, what, what you're essentially saying is you actually don't know how to have a good time. And the fact that it baffles people that you can have a good time without drink shows you how insanity has actually been normalised in Ireland. I started drinking at 12, which was too young. You know, I blacked out at 13, I had a blackout. Do you know that a blackout is a sign you have a problem? I know in Ireland a blackout is like a destination. <laughs> a place you're trying to get to. In the rest of the world, when you have a blackout, people think, I, need, I think you need to do something about your drinking. In Ireland, when you have a blackout, it's like, made it? <laughs> home sweet home. Street. Someone's been assaulted. Every Friday and Saturday night is the same in the city centre. The majority of cases that we go to after, kind of after 11 or 12 o'clock, every case is, is drink or drug related, pretty much. Yeah. Um, it's, it's an exception if it's not. Do you wish after seeing all the harm, like, do you wish people would like cop on? Yeah, it can, it can be frustrating for, for us, like, as, yeah. as ambulance crew. Close off all. Did you get called to the guy who got hit by a bottle? Yeah, it's a I think that's the gentleman over here. All right. What's the most common alcohol-related accident? It's, it's usually assaults and head injuries, like people falling to the ground. If someone's assaulted, it's usually 
they're, they're usually punched in the head or, or hit with an object, a bottle or whatever in the head. A few people had a disagreement with him and they gave him a smack in the head. We don't know what they actually hit him with, he doesn't know himself. You okay in the back, Dago? Everybody's treated the same, whether it's an old lady who's fallen on the street or whether it's somebody who's fallen out of a pub, absolutely legless. They, yeah. they both get the same level of care from us, ir irrespective of how they've done their injury. I had three cars and I, I was trying to get a leg on They'll always like you. It's, it's, always like, it's like they're talking to their mommy. How many drinks do you have? Just two, just three. <laughs> where, where you know they've had, like, God knows how many. What's the hot spot? What's your, what's your greatest street? Greatest <laughs> street? I, 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 let me make a guess. Either it's Temple Bar or Harcourt Street. Yeah, nailed. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're the two, pretty they're much. They're the two hot spots, right? Yeah. yeah. The... More country people on Harcourt Street. Yeah. <laughs> well, the sweep and generalization, yeah. <laughs> You know, many of our cases in the emergency department are ultimately people who are there by choice. You know, a long history of alcohol or tobacco or other drug consumption. I suppose the most upsetting cases we get are the ones where uh, a patient bursts out of the back of an ambulance or the back of a, a police van, uh, very, very violent, very delirious, full of alcohol, always. Plus or minus headshot or cocaine or solvents. And that deeply upsets me. Peace off. Everybody knows how busy we are and how overstretched, and we're not getting any less overstretched. So when you see this kind of situation, which is technically incredibly avoidable, and it's technically entirely self-inflicted there and then, that's probably the most difficult thing to put up with. What do we do? Where is your pain at the moment? In your legs. Anything yeah. across here? No. Move on, sir! No. That guy just walked out in front of this taxi. Yeah, full of drink. Full of drink, is he? As you do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I know, I mean. I mean, actually, do you know what? Do you know what? He's had one or two, look. He's been out since 6 o'clock. <laughs> it's now 2 o'clock in the morning. I think he's only had two. Two right fire up. trucks, ambulance, all these cops. Yeah. It's a lot of money. You better believe it. Of course it is, yeah. And we're out here doing this. Well, God knows what else. Yeah, is going what on else is happening? It's heavy duty, isn't it? All these people have to come out. This guy, pissed, walks in front of a taxi. That taxi driver's life. You know what I mean? Like casualties of crack. I like to call them. So uh, we have Arthur's Day now. I mean, if ever. There was a country that didn't need a fucking national drinking holiday. It is Ireland. I love that hat. If the greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing people that he didn't exist, the greatest trick that Guinness ever pulled was convincing the Irish to celebrate a random day in the middle of the year. It's, it's, I'd say, I'd, 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 to be honest, I think we shouldn't raise a glass to Arthur. We should everybody just, at 1759, just raise a glass to marketing. So we're here having the crack at Arthur's Day, which right now looks pretty amazing, I have to say. To Arthur. I don't drink it, but I rob somebody's glass. To Arthur, for all the positive and negative you brought to Ireland. Do you guys think Ireland has a dysfunctional relationship with alcohol? Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt no, no about it. They're grand. <laughs> hey. Everyone's having the crack, to be honest. Where, where's the line? Ireland's relationship with alcohol. Where's the line? It seems like good fun right now. I have to be honest with you. Is Ireland's, re is Ireland's relationship with alcohol positive or negative? Positive. It looks positive right now. Are you preaching again? No, I'm not preaching. I'm asking questions. <laughs> what do you think about it? Time. You did not, did you? Yes, we did. Oh, my God, you're so susceptible to marketing. <laughs> does it make you feel more Irish when you drink Guinness? It does. They say that Guinness doesn't travel. Do you think it's better? I don't know. I haven't even tried it Oh, yet. try it. First Guinness in Ireland. First Guinness. Oh, right, and now your first Guinness mustache. There you go. Licky, licky. <laughs> I don't drink, but I am having the time of my life. And even though I hate Arthur's Day and everything it represents, like, this is great fun. Because this is addictive. I want to go have more crack now. I don't want to drink, but I definitely want to get laid. <laughs> Irish people don't give themselves enough credit. This is Ireland. This is not booze. We don't actually, Irish people have this without booze or with just a little bit of it. I've had so much fun here, but it's not as clear cut. In fact, I would say here on Arthur's Day, Ireland's relationship with alcohol is not black and white. That's for sure. 
to Arthur. To Arthur. As a marketing lecturer, <laughs> is Arthur's Day kind of like the it's high, the, the major high five of marketing? It's genius. It is the holy grail if you think about it. Because what they have done is they've taken a whole day and they've made people not just talk about Guinness and write about Guinness, but drink Guinness. People who don't even like Guinness will drink it on that day because of some type of social obligation. They, they get people to come out and celebrate this man's life for what did he do for humanity? He invented Guinness. Well, I mean, that was great, you know, fantastic on one level. I mean, you know, I can think of plenty of, uh, on the most basic level, uh, footballers I'd prefer to celebrate than uh, Arthur Guinness. Well, look at Arthur's Day says it all. Like. I mean, on one hand, we're anti-drugs in this country, and on another hand, we have a national piss-up day, which really is, uh, you know, the one about sending out the wrong message. What message does that send out? And I say this as someone who likes to get pissed every now and then. Ireland has connected itself with Guinness so strongly that we feel like we can have a national day to Arthur Guinness. We don't have a Daniel O'Connell day, we don't have a Charles Stewart Parnell day, we don't have a Michael Collins day, but we have... Arthur's Day, dedicated to a man who created a pint of Guinness. It's not fucking penicillin now, okay? <laughs> but here's the truth. 88 people a month die from alcohol. Now I know Guinness isn't killing 88 people a month, but the active ingredient in their product does kill people quite a lot in Ireland when you think about it. But yeah, we have Arthur's Day in a country where it's a fact that we have a weakness for alcohol. Arthur's Day to Arthur. That's like Superman toasting kryptonite. <laughs> A series about Ireland's dysfunctional relationship with alcohol. Let's go fucking mentality! So how much? Ha! Ha! What's up, man? Can I get a hold? Sure, yeah. How far is too far, dude? Guys, you know, you know when they say no, the one that's one too many. Do you think that was like an hour and a half ago? Yeah. Oh, you haven't got there yet? No. They get advertised all day to drink it, you know? But then when they drink too much of it, the problem is misuse. It's a very easy product to misuse. Drink responsibly is bullshit. When you drink, you get less responsible. We call it drinking culture, you know? But like, it's not a culture, it's an escape. Yeah, well, this is crazy, like, you know, I mean, if you'd never seen this before, you would think this is absolutely nuts. But, like, I actually don't think this is nuts. We think this is normal. Having a drink, sitting around with your friends, having a drink, that's a ritual that's worth having. This is the same as somebody sticking a needle in their arm, and I have no problem saying that. You know, you're standing on the street stumbling. What's the difference between you and some heroin addict who's sitting on a step, falling asleep with a cigarette in his hand. As far as I'm concerned, there's no difference. But whatever, man, like, that's just the way Irish people drink. That's the way they do it. Uh, people hear my accent, they'll just say, I'm a fucking yank, but whatever, I'm not a yank, like, I'm not a fucking idiot. I can see, you know? It's quite clear. <laughs>